Thank you for coming. Uh, usually I get a clap. Can I get a clap before we start? I, I, thank you. Yeah, that's very good. That's very good. Uh, I like that. I, I love it when people clap for me. Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, Adagios. And the title of the presentation is Web Configuration Done Right. And uh, before I start, uh, I usually want to know like whom I'm talking to, so I can at least try to make it slightly interesting for you guys. So I'd like to see by show of hands how many people here would describe themselves as programmers. All right, quite a few. And uh, how many would say they are sysadmins? All right, pretty cool, good to know. Uh, how many people here would say they are the monitoring guy? They configure Nagios or Ginga or... All right, you came to the right presentation, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> so our agenda for today, um, we are going to start by talking a little bit about me. Uh, that's not going to be interesting for, for you guys, but it's my presentation, so I can talk about whatever I want. After that, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Adagios, which will be slightly more relevant for you guys. Um, after that, we're going to see some demos, and I think everyone came here to see demos. Like, who likes to see demos? I, I usually just love the demos. If we have time, we will talk about some other tools that are not Adagios, but uh, still interesting for me. So, uh, meet Pali. I have been a monitoring consultant for six or seven years now. Ever since uh, 2009, I've been mostly involved with Nakios uh, and compatible products. Um, I've been mostly based like in and around Iceland, um, and I would describe myself as a great fan of monitoring quality. And when I talk about monitoring quality, it's when you define a perfect monitoring system out there somewhere, and uh, it monitors exactly what you want, meaning you don't have any false positives and any false negatives, and of course it requires zero maintenance. That would be perfect monitoring system for me. Um, and I really love to try to achieve that goal whenever I can. I'm a core developer in uh, these projects over here, Pinac, OK Config. Uh, Pinacs are um, Python modules for configuring Nagios, and OK Config is a monitoring pack thingy. I've mostly been doing uh, development since 2011. However, being a monitoring consultant, uh, going through Git blames for my customers, I think for the past four years, I personally have created around 100,000 service checks. And I'm just the monitoring consultant. Usually I don't want to be the one that is adding hosts and services because for me that's really, really boring. And uh, for anyone that has done it 100,000 times, of course it's going to be boring. But uh, why do I put that up there? It, because I, I think I know uh, a little bit on how to configure monitoring. And my conclusion has been that uh, monitoring really sucks. Has anyone seen this hashtag? This was a uh, two, that's good. Anyone else? Oh, okay. So for those of you who don't know, this is uh, about two-year-old hashtag that arrived on Twitter, and it was a big trend at the time. And there was some guy on the internet, and he made a very clever observation that uh, IT has been changing really, really fast, and the monitoring tools have kind of lagged behind. And uh, he's not referring to Nakios or Isinka specifically, but they're definitely not the best of the lot. Um, and I think everyone here knows that has uh, that is really good with monitoring, that the tools are sometimes holding us kind of back. And even with simple things, if you're given a host name and service description X and all you have to do is add a new contact group to it, it should never be a 20 to 40 minute job to do that if you're not familiar with the configuration. It should be a 10 second job every time. So this really got me thinking that monitoring sucks and 
I wanted to do something about it, to help with it. So up came Adagios. There were a lot of other web configuration systems out there before I started, and I thought they all really sucked, so I wanted to make my own that really sucked. And now I have it, and I can only hope that it's slightly better than all the other ones. Um, so Adagios, it's an add-on to Nagios or Isinka or Shinken. Now we have a new one announced half an hour ago, Nimon. Um, under the hood, we use Pinock for configuration and OKConfig OK for monitoring packs. Um, as of late, we also have a tiny, cute little status view, and we use live status for that. Uh, is there anyone here that is not using live status currently? Yeah. So when you go to work on Friday or Monday, whatever you're going to do, stop that. Uh, install live status instead. It's great. So a few things we are trying to achieve with uh, developing Adagios. One of it is to be the best web configuration system for Nagios or Zynga that exists out there. Um, I'm fairly confident that uh, we've already reached that point, partly because all the other ones we define as config generators, because they don't actually edit any configs. They just overwrite them. Um, if anyone uh, disagrees with this fact, I am happy to hear the fa feedback in form of pull requests on GitHub. We also try to make monitoring nice. I think the fact of the matter that neither Nakios or Isinga are really nice, uh, but we try to do our best to take uh, uh, like my nuances as a consultant, everything that takes too much time for me, we try to implement that into Adagios. So usually if we bring a new feature into Adagios, it has to satisfy at least one of those two goals, either to make it the best monitoring system or best uh, configuration system out there, sorry, or to make our existing monitoring more nice. If it doesn't fulfill those goals, we will probably not implement those features. There are a few things I think we do right. Um, there are also a ton of things I think we do wrong, but I'm not going to tell you about any of those. So I'm going to talk about the ones that we do well. Um, first one is uh, really easy to install. Um, it will install uh, on top of your existing Nagios or Isinga instance. We don't want to take over your monitoring system like uh, some other configuration systems do, because that wouldn't be nice to do that. So. Uh, Little yum install, and we're ready to go, and we can start then do some configurations. If we don't like it, we can just remove it, and we were not any worse for it. We also have some really sharp uh, command line tools, uh, namely Pinac and OKConfig OK tools. And the reason we do that is that, uh, one, we really love command line tools, and also that uh, most of our users, they are never pure uh, receivers of software. Usually our users, they take software and they like to glue it together and build their own stuff. So we want to make that really, really easy to build your own stuff. We do not have a database backend. So I don't know if you have used other web configuration systems out there that have some database, MySQL or something, and then you want to write some script to make changes to your configuration system or something, and then afterwards you go to the web configuration system and you click that big export button that will delete all your config files and overwrite them with whatever they thought was right. We don't have that. Instead, uh, we use the Nakios or Zynga configuration files as backend. Uh, and if we want to make a tiny little change, like add a contact group to a service or something, that will be the only bytes that will be written to the config files. Uh, I'm very happy. Is there anyone else that is happy about this? Okay, people love it. Good, I'm not the only one. Uh, we have a fully functional REST API that is uh, both for status data and also for configuration. 
It means that uh, lots of cool ideas can be really simple all of a sudden. Uh, for example, there was one, what was it? Yeah, if you do a reboot on your servers, have a tiny little hook that will connect to the NACU system and say, I want downtime for 20 minutes because someone typed in reboot and pressed enter. Now that can be really easy. Now that's just one W get away. That's kind of cool. Um, also to put in your kickstarts when you're installing a new server, have it connect to the monitoring system and say, hey, I'm a new server. This is my host name and IP address. Just give me the standard Linux checks that you have previously defined. I want that. And also log back in here and deploy an agent. Um, stuff like that, really easy for us at least. Third thing, I think we do really well. Uh, we, or at least I, I really, really believe in a gift culture. And what does that mean? We have, uh, we have a huge community out there that's doing monitoring. And I really think that we are contributing to it by giving a lot of good software into it. Um, there's no secret sauce or subscription version or something like that. Uh, just like the NS client guy said, you, you can try to give us more money, we won't give you better software for it. Um, however, we, we do believe that the effort we are putting into it, that we are going to get it back somehow. Meaning that uh, if you use our software, you really like it, we know you will send us an email and tell us that you like it. If you have patches, you will send us the patches. And if you think we saved you a few hundred man hours because we had Pinac, why not send us some money or ask for professional services? And instead, we were going to take really, really good care of you guys. Anyway, demo time. Uh, I do have this site up called demo.adagios.org, but I think I'm going to cheat a little bit and uh, not use that one. Mainly because someone scared me recently that they would log into the demo system while I was demoing it, and if I would be adding hosts, they would go and delete them at the same second. <laughs> and uh, also, the last time I checked in, there was a lot of people uh, adding hosts, and they were trying to do all sorts of SQL injections and JavaScript injections, and that was uh, impressive for me to see. I was like, ah, I don't think there was a break-in. Well, I was fairly confident there was no break-in, but it made for some really, really ugly host names. So I'm not going to trouble you guys with that. So here we have the system. We uh, log in, and you can see there's a big black toolbar up here, and it shows you several different uh, components. Uh, one of them here is uh, one of them here shows, shows you the regular Nagios interface. I use uh, Thruk. Is the Thruk guy here? Yeah. Awesome stuff. Thank you for making it. Uh, but that's not what I'm going to talk about right now. It's We have uh, our own status interface at up here. And when we first click on it, we go to an overview page, um, maybe kind of like uh, in the old CGI's in, in Nagios and Nzinka, the tactical overview thing, but this one we think is actually useful. So we have here some totals. So you can see I have almost 2,000 services here running on my laptop. Uh, we have a top alert producers here, which is, I think is convenient to have in front of your eyes regularly because often that's an uh, indicator of uh, bad thresholds or broken plugins. And uh, right over here, we have a list of unhandled service problems. And in fact, if I click up here where it says problems, right, you see I have a bunch of services here that are in a warning or critical state. Kind of like the unhandled services list in the old Nagios interface. Uh, you can see most of these are ping checks, which makes sense because I'm on a really crappy Wi-Fi here. So that's all well and good. I think it's maybe a little slow. 
Uh, so I'm gonna just uh, fly by a few features. Some of them are gonna be hit and miss. Some of them you think are cool and some are not. So we can select many of them at a time and do a recheck. We will, uh, the page will wait in the background until Nikios has finished um, executing the check. When it's done with all the pings, it's gonna refresh the page. Um, we can also click on a couple of them and acknowledge a problem. Yeah, I will deal with it, or even better. Uh, I have a feature here that uh, I never expected that people will use so much, but turns out every, almost everyone is using. There's a tiny little button here that does nothing but send out an email. So I have two services checked. And uh, what I can do is I can send a mail to a colleague here, Tommy, and say, hi, I am at conference. This one is on you. Then I don't have to do anything. And uh, what it will do, it will send him an email with a um, list of the services. Uh, if the email client supports HTML, we have really nifty like acknowledgement and recheck buttons in the email. And uh, optionally, if we click acknowledge here, the services are going to be acknowledged with sent an email to this guy, meaning that he's hopefully going to take care of it. Uh, way easier than saying you're going to take care of something self yourself, sending it over to someone else. All right, so um, what well, looks good here? We have uh, Google Com ping, sure. So if you click on an uh, individual check, we'll go into something that looks similar to status detail, if you're familiar with that one. So we have a few tabs here that will organize your data. And the general one, we will just have the most basic stuff, like what's the status, IP address of the host, output from the plugin, and uh, one thing that uh, I'm really happy about, we take the poor performance data, if there is any, and we break it down into a nice table. And you can see here there are two performance metrics. There's the packet loss and the round trip average. And it will look at the thresholds and will tell us that here is the problem. Uh, maybe not all that useful on this check, but uh, think about uh, disk checks where you're checking 100 disks and the plugin will just report warning some disk it has a problem, then uh, it's really easy to say which disk has a problem. Um, we also have some graphs. Um, we integrate with PNP for Nakios, mostly. Uh, so what uh, Nakios will do, it will detect if PNP is installed. If it is installed, it's gonna check if this host has any graphs, and it's gonna display the graphs that we have. I know uh, it's very common to take the, what's the name of the attribute, extra URL, make the extra URL be a link into PMP for Nagios, and if you want to see some graphs, you click it and you go into PMP, and oh, okay, we don't have any of that. Just if there are graphs, we'll print them, and you can use the extra URL for action URL, I think it is. You can use it for something a little more useful. Um, so if a history tab here will show not only how, it will show how the um, state changes have been for the service. And you can see that I've been on this hotel for quite a while and it's always been bad. So maybe it's time to edit some thresholds for it. So we do have an edit button here. And when we click the edit button, you can see we go into a slightly different interface because uh, now we assume we're an admin into the system. We're here and we're here to make changes. We're not just accepting the data and using it. We're gonna change some stuff. And uh, similar to the other one, that like all the attributes are broken into several fields. And uh, if we wanna do a change, like add it to a service group, like me, maybe add it to this one here as well. Just click save. Boom, it's in there. And uh, we see we have a little button here called uh, Geek Edit. And if we click it, we will see the actual definition that is in the file. And uh, this is byte by byte the definition as it looks in your file. So 
Uh, if you would rather do it here because there's an attribute that we don't support or whatever it is, you can still go here and do whatever changes you want. I think this is one of the first features that we implemented. We didn't have any other uh, the other stuff. We just had the geek edit, and then we, like every time we had to use geek edit, we see, oh, that would be nifty if there was a faster way to do it like this and this. So that's how we actually started by developing it. And it turned out that, uh, like, going in here instead of editing a config file on a text editor, it doesn't seem like you're gaining a lot, but you are in fact gaining a lot because you save all the time that you spent finding that configuration file. So that's one I'm really happy about. Um, over here to the right, we can see like uh, related configuration items. So we have here a quick link to the uh, template that we're using. We can see the check command here. It's called okc-check underscore ping, which means it comes from uh, one of our monitoring packs. So it's slightly different from the regular check ping. And if we click on it, we see this is the configuration for the check command, which is not all that useful. But we also have here a tab called uh, monitoring. And uh, what we get here is, uh, we can select which uh, check command is being used. And you will see here below, it will read from the command line definition all the custom variables it has, uh, which makes it really convenient if you want to add or edit some thresholds for it. And uh, you can see here under the command line, you have like uh, macros like host address. Yes, they are here. And uh, Dagios will take care of the really boring stuff, which is to resolve those macros for you. Um, I don't know if you guys, like, uh, how many here have used custom variables for services? They are quite nifty. But if you are creating uh, check commands a lot, like I have been doing, or creating your own plugins, you know, uh, getting this string here right can be really, really boring and cumbersome. And it was like, ah, yeah, I forgot the single quote here. All right, change it, save the file. Reload Nagios, click recheck, wait, refresh a couple of times. No, it was still wrong. So now it's really simple. And you see here below we have a resolved uh, command line. And if we want to change something, like uh, we have here the warning thresholds, you will see it's supposed to be here. And if we want to change it to 200, that's just fine. And we can take this new command. And we can uh, paste it into a shell if we want, because that would be quicker than reloading Nagios and then finding out it's not right. Or we also have a little button here called run check plugin, which means Atakios will resolve that check command. It's going to run it, and it's going to show us the output, which is really nice if you are working with the check commands a lot. All right. Lots of other stuff here that it's, for me, really boring, actually. Um, few niceties, like uh, resolving contacts and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have to say about that. Let's go into OK config here. So this is us editing uh, a single instance that's already here. And if we were making a small change, just changing a service description or something or saving it, it can be really easy. Uh, you see up here, it has an uh, icon that is telling us that some modifications have been made, and it's time to reload the monitoring core. So um, we can fiddle around, do some changes, and uh, if we're happy, we cl click reload, and we'll see the changes up here in our monitoring core. But if we want to add new hosts, we have here a unit called OK Config. So these or is our template engine and our monitoring packs. And maybe it's good if I start by explaining why we went into making this, is that uh, we work for a lot of companies, and almost every single one of them was making their own custom shell scripts for adding new hosts, because it's such a mundane task. And if you're even a least bit clever, you will find a way to automate it and do that easier. So we thought, OK. So if everyone is doing it, like 
maybe we could do it in an abstract manner, so uh, you, not everyone has to implement for themselves. And we can also make some suggestions. So if I add a host, say example.com, if I had, oh, yep, it will resolve here for us. It means we have at least a little bit of internet. Uh, we can choose which group to put it in. I'll just stick with the defaults. And then it asks what kind of templates to add on it. And um, these would be our monitoring packs, which are highly opinionated, and that's like our idea. So we have here standard Linux checks. That's uh, our idea of what a standard Linux server, how it should be monitored before you know anything about what it's running. Uh, most of our customers make changes to these, and uh, like they have their own ideas. Um, we don't have an agent on example.com, although I would much like to. But we do have like standard HTTP checks, standard HTTPS checks. Uh, adding, okay. It says save successful. <coughs> And now we have a few options. Uh, one of them is to go and install an agent on it. Uh, if we click on that, we see here you can type in the name of a host. And uh, you can choose either one of two methods that we have, uh, SSH and WinX. Yeah? And that means it will deploy uh, our agent that has a pretty sensible config. So we decide that if it's a Windows machine, we're going to install NS client and uh, like uh, our set of configs on it. Um, for the Linux ones, we also support like Debian and Red Hat. Uh, even SUSE, I think someone sent patches for SUSE recently. Um, not much to say about that. Username, password, if your monitoring server has SSH keys or is logged in using Kerberos, it will use that. We don't have to type in a password. Click Submit and uh, Boom, it's going to install an agent for us. Something that I'm really happy about, but I can't demo that for you, unfortunately. Uh, I'll just uh, try to convey the idea that it's really cool when I do. Is there anyone here that thinks this is cool or thinks that installing agents m manually is boring? I think so. Um, we also have a network scan feature. And... Uh, uh, let's see, I think we can run this on just loopback. I'm not going to dare scanning something on the internet if I don't have Wi-Fi. In fact, last time I tried to demo this with no uh, no internet connectivity, it crashed on me because my machine had no interfaces for some reason. Uh, turns out I deleted the loopback somehow. Yeah, it gives you loads of trouble. So anyway, so we scan, and it, it shows you here we have uh, three machines. Uh, localhost is already here, so we do not have uh, an add button for it, but for the other ones we have a convenient button to add it into monitoring, and it will do some basic detection. It will, it will tell us like what kind of operating system it is, does it have uh, an RPE installed or not, uh, is it configured to talk to us, are we in the loud hosts, etc. Is it a web server, and what, what we use this for is not so much for automation, but it's more like a checklist. If you uh, focus a lot of monitoring for a month, and then you can't focus on that anymore because you're busy, you've got all those new servers, and when you're done with that, you usually go, ah, oh, did I monitor all of them? So it, there's like a quick way just to scan the network, uh, check if they're all being monitored or not. And I think that's really convenient, um, just in case that you forgot something. Uh, let's see. I just added a host. Maybe I can just. Uh Do a reload. Okay. Going in status. Now I kind of wonder if. Yep. I'm going to recheck here just in case. We see our new host is here. And uh, these are the checks that we added. And we just take a quick look at uh, the HTTP one. Uh, again, we see the performance data broken down into time and size. Really handy. Um, go back into edit. 
So it got uh, our monitoring pack for check HTTP, which is just a good old check HTTP that comes with the standard plugins. But you see we are using the macros really cleverly here, like the on redirect. Who, who remembers which option that is? Is that mean minus R for redirect? No, it's uh, minus F, I think, or something. Uh, quite handy. I like this, and I'm quite happy, and I think I'm um, one step closer to making monitoring nice, because all that mundane stuff, like regular HTTP checks, all of a sudden they are easy. And uh, I feel better, and I'm slightly more happy as a result. Um, we have uh, Google Maps integration. Um, Nothing really fancy about that. Almost all of my customers have implemented that on their own. They think it's a nice idea. That's this is how I'm going to learn JavaScript. I'm going to connect Google Maps with Nagios. So, to all of those, I say sorry uh, that I did that, and now your script is useless because mine looks slightly better. Um, let's see. We have here, yeah, we have a business intelligence module that we have been working on. Uh, is it going to load for us? Yes. So at, at first we really didn't see the point, like this is like first two or three years we're doing monitoring when we couldn't really see the point of doing uh, uh, business intelligence modules because we thought w whatever your business intelligence module is going to be, you can always write a plugin for that. Uh, that was our old approach. and. So if you want to know if two of these are up, yeah, you just write a plugin that checks the two of these. But uh, now we've been doing a lot of it, so all of a sudden we go, okay, maybe it's not so useless, and you can save a lot of time just by, like in this case, we have a business process X, and it relies on like databases, storage, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, if we click on it, we should have a, a uh, really nice dashboard that comes up. Is there anyone knows where this layout comes from? I want to see it. You know it, okay. So I made this great layout for a dashboard, <laughs> uh, completely original or something like that. Uh, but we have a lot of customers that now have a demand for a nice dashboard like this. And it's usually meant like not for the technicians because they usually look at just the unhandled problems, but they look at um, for management is one, and uh, also for knock. Someone that takes a phone call and like, is the mail up or down? You don't really want to look at all the unhandled problems if you don't know what disk critical means because it's 95% full. All you want to see is, are my web services up or down, yes or no? Like, quite simple. So there's no more detail than this, and you just have the basic metrics to look at here. This can be quite handy. Um, and I'm going to show you one instance of this where we're running in uh, reality. It's a page called iceland.adagios.org. Uh, I don't know if anyone here has heard of this. This is a project called uh, Monitor Iceland. And uh, what we have been trying to accomplish in this is to take um, everything that uh, we feel is important to Icelandic society, and we're going to monitor it with uh, Nagios. So green, yellow, red for Iceland. And uh, we, well, I kind of love it. Uh, and you can see here, if we go through the description, this is a real time monitor of different metrics. We try to include everything we can get our hands on, like radiation levels or how many people are in the emergency room in Iceland. Uh, or the, is the public transport, is it up or is it not? Uh, we do have volcano status. <laughs> that is a good story, actually, because um, we first started with the project, and uh, then we had a uh, phone call from this really nice guy, and uh, he worked for a weather office. And he called us up and said, oh, this project is really cool. Is there anything I can help you with? And uh, we said, like, yeah. Is there any reliable data source that is up to date that can check just to see if there's a volcano erupting or not? 
because the business process we had before, it was kind of unreliable. It was like looking for alerts from the weather network combined with number of people in Icelandic talking about volcanoes. It was like, we didn't think it was like uh, reliable enough. And he goes to see, well, uh, yeah, I know we have it, but what do, does the internet have this? And then he sent me an email and he said, yep, I found this one secret URL for you that you can use. Here's the link, and uh, there's a data source for you that you can use there. I don't know if you can use it though or not, because it was a PNG image, which was like a map of Iceland, and there was a marker where every known volcano was, and it had like was either green or red. So I had to make an Agios plugin that downloads the PNG image and counts the number of red pixels to detect how many volcanoes are currently erupting. And I thought, like, okay, PNG image, that's a terrible data source. It, it could have been worse. It could have been soap. Like, so thank God it was at least PNG. <laughs> but uh, you can see here, and this is an actual live uh, business process. Uh, the name of the process is Iceland, and the current uh, health status of it is normal, even though some of the sub-processes have uh, minor problems. Then we choose, like, metrics to put in. Uh, that can be interesting uh, as graphs. So here we have patients in the emergency room. There are currently 16 over there. Um, we have some other ones that are hidden, like how many people are currently undergoing surgery. And uh, my little niece, she had uh, an appendix problem like two or three months ago back, and she had to go into surgery right away. And this was during the middle of the night. So I was looking at the graph and like zero people, and then she went in and like, Loop. One person. <laughs> Half an hour later, tick, she was done. And I'm like, hey, you're done. Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Can I get another applause for that? It was like, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, one thing that uh, I will show you later on if I have time, but uh, one thing we've been doing in Adagios, because we're really good at uh, parsing performance data. So we work a lot with the performance data that Nagios has, or Isinka has. Uh, and it, we, we use it for all sorts of different things. Like, um, this would be one typical like average response time of all the web servers in this host group that I have, called Icelandic Web Servers. It's like top 300 biggest websites in Iceland or something. Uh, can be interesting, and I, I keep finding more and more useful ways for writing checks that do nothing else than aggregating other status checks or using the performance data for other status checks. Um, <coughs> it's a shame to say that out of those 300, I think somewhere around 15 of them take more than five seconds to load. <laughs> so at some point, I think I will put up a name and shame list of like the slowest websites that are used. Uh, we have the ability to browse down a little bit. So. Um, Environment and natural disasters, we can click on that, and it will show us another one. And uh, you can see here that uh, there is currently an avalanche alert in Iceland. And uh, there's also a warning on earthquake levels. And this will be a typical use of um, how we use the business processes. So uh, it shows us here a graph, and there are 10 earthquakes in Iceland for the past one hour, but they've all been really minor ones. So that's not really important to us. But uh, if there is one really big one, we want to escalate the status to critical. There's only one problem with that, is that uh, uh, earthquake sensors are a delicate thing, and if someone just happens to be walking too close to one and does like this, it's gonna say, oh, okay, it's catastrophic earthquake coming along. So we can also add a little bit of mitigation factors. Uh, again, Twitter is good for that. So if we have a big one and a ton of people say in Icelandic, did anyone feel the earthquake? Yeah, we will escalate that to a major earthquake. So can be useful um, under the right circumstances. Uh, anyway, what do I have here that I can show you guys a little. I'll give you guys a little bit peek. This is something I was coding on the airplane on the way over here. So 
If it explodes, please just close your eyes while I change to another another page. Uh, here we're loading up uh, the performance metrics that are currently inside the running Nakios instance. So we see here some host, ping check, and uh, statuses, and I have another one here. And I, I don't know exactly where we are going with this feature, but uh, I keep finding more and more uses for it. So if you look, for example, at uh, ping on all hosts. Um, and from the command line, you can kind of like query it like a database. And uh, you look here at the performance data, and all of a sudden, we're seeing uh, packet loss for all of our hosts. And we see here some of them have a lot of packet loss, others do not. And uh, probably and CPU utilization here. Even better one, where you can look at the utilization for all your hosts or a subset of hosts. Um, think if you have a CPU intensive cluster, it might be interesting to see all your data in a table like this. Um, the idea came from uh, one of our checks that we deploy with both uh, Windows and uh, Linux agents. We check for the number of outstanding security updates that are running. And it was a really good idea at first, at least. Like, who doesn't want to get alerted if you forgot to patch a server? Uh, but then later on, we started getting like complaints because it was creating a lot of noise. And they were going, OK, Pali, I know this plugin you wrote. That was really cool. But uh, it's not a critical problem if there's one outstanding update. So can we have the check still running? Because it's nice to have the performance data. Um, however. Uh, we don't want to alert on it. We just want to show green all the time so we can just look at it. And uh, wasn't really useful, but all of a sudden now it is useful because imagine a table like this and you can look uh, at all your hosts, see outstanding updates. Um, all of a sudden we are kind of out of the monitoring scope. We're getting more into the management scope. And I know there are a lot of tools out there that would do this 100 times better. But you don't always have those insults in your infrastructure. So if you're collecting all this data anyway, why not make something useful out of it? All right. Um, I don't know how, what's other interesting things to show. One thing I learned recently. So I'm looking at host groups here that are on my laptop. and. Uh, in configuration files, you can put uh, host groups into host groups, which can be kind of cool because you can organize your stuff together. But uh, the CGIs, they don't really know anything about this, and they don't convey this to you. So let's see if this will. Of course, it has to hang on. It's OK. So all of a sudden, this can be quite useful. Uh, to display it. You have all your customers, and then there's a list of customers and just summary for those customers. We usually have this up on our, we have a few like big flat screen TVs at uh, our office. Uh, some of them are like monitoring our internal systems, and some of them are monitoring uh, our customers, and we aggregate a lot of status info from our customers. Uh, so we sometimes rotate between like this super high level view, and then we have like a dashboard here. This is meant designed for the flat screen TV. It will just show you like unhandled problems. And if there are no problems, ideally it would switch over to playing football or something. Because nobody likes an empty screen. <laughs> but then again, when you have a problem, then uh, it, it should show you those problems. Rotating screens are a good idea, by the way, because uh, I will get less tired from looking at them. I do work for one enterprise where they have an outstanding rule that uh, if their screen is completely empty and uh, there are no unhandled problems, there's a picture of an ice cream. And the boss goes out to the store and buys ice cream for everyone, which is a big deal because there are like 100 something people working in that department. Uh, interesting things, and uh, again, they do contribute to making monitoring nice. And the monitoring system is working for us, we are not slaves to the monitoring system. Uh, on those terms, uh, I think I'm more or less done. 
the tools. Mm. Yep, I already told you about all this. Um, let's just uh, cut it short. Thank you guys very much for listening. Um, fork us on Git GitHub if you know how to fork, especially if you can send us patches because we love patches. Um, if you don't, fork us anyway because it makes us feel good to see a lot of forks and lots of likes. We like likes. Uh, so I'm all done. Thank you very much. So thank you. Any questions? So the question is, uh, most will have a huge configuration already. Uh, how do you migrate? Uh, it's, imp uh, it's very simple. You just install Adagios, because it will work on your existing configuration. We're not going to migrate anything, because that's not nice. So we want it to work out of the box on your config. It will not. It will not force a certain file structure. However, if you are adding new hosts, by default, it will suggest the same file structure that we really like. And uh, so usually it creates stuff more structured way than I can, at least. So um, in, in those terms, you have one. You would have to set a, your own defaults if you want. But it, it doesn't care where your, your host or service is live, because it's going to start by reading your main configuration file and just read all the objects there. And they will edit them in place. Yes? Is it possible to do uh, massive updates? The question is, is it possible to do massive updates? Uh, yes. Yes, it is. So, um, uh, yeah. Uh, so the question is, uh, sorry, I, d I didn't get that. What was the question? So you have a host group? I have one host group, mm -hmm. but the different Nagios hosts. Oh, right. It's the same game. Yes. So let's say you want to modify one of them, not the others. So how would that work? That will work 100% because we don't deal with it. There is one Adagios installed per Nagios server. That's how we deal with it when it comes to the configuration. Uh, we, we kind of have plans to support multiple instances, but we don't have anyone paying us enough money to do it, and it's not really scratching an itch for me right now. So, um, so we've kind of thought about it, but we kind of don't go there. Uh, when it comes to the bulk updates, you can do it from Adagios. You can select multiple services, and you can click Edit, and you can change like a single attribute for it. I usually do it from the command line, though. Because for me, that kind of feels quicker, and the web interface wasn't really helping. So we sometimes have a really good um, bulk commit that looks like this. Pinag update, change an attribute, like in this case, change the check command. And then you type in where that's kind of like an SQL. Kind of like SQL. We, we, we don't want to go there, because we don't support everything that SQL supports. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, we can manage the Nagios config files from CheckMK, yes. But but the CheckMK files, like the CheckMK configuration files, uh, we do not. Um, we wanted to do that because we really liked CheckMK, but uh, uh, the configuration format is not really friendly for that, and we would we wish the nice people at MK would uh, change their format to be slightly friendlier to this. Um, they have an idea for themselves with the rule-based stuff, which definitely does not go into the group of making monitoring nice, although it's extremely efficient at some points. So uh, currently, no, we do not. Yes? 
Can we configure LDAP? Yes, we are also a fully functional LDAP configuration system. <laughs> uh, we can. Uh, that is, uh, we could implement it in the way that uh, all the configuration we do, it's not implemented in the web interface, it's in the underlying library called Pinac. And uh, if you would look at the code, you see we have multiple backend uh, modules. Uh, the one we use mostly is the config module, which is represents the Nikos config files. Um, we are working on another one that is Synca 2 config files, which also suffers from the same problem. It's uh, not something you would configure in 2013, that format, but <laughs> that's uh, another topic. But, but we could make an LDAP backend if we so desire it. Um, no one asked what we do badly. Good. I, I would rather not say what we do badly. <laughs> yes? So you have a custom uh, CMDB and you have custom scripts that generate the iSync uh, configuration and uh, you're not happy with writing custom scripts so you will look for a more standard way to generate the configuration and yes, we can provide that. We have that in the REST API. Uh, um, we use it for a lot of things, mostly for making the web interface faster, like in our own product. Um, also, I told you about the OK config monitoring packs, which has the, like, create new hosts, apply all of these service templates in, like, one function. Um, that's what we use it for the most. And uh, if I were in your shoes, that's what I would use at the same time. Um, more questions? No? One more, yes. Um, integrated in the way that you install OMD and use OMD to install Adagios. It's a wonderful idea. Um, is there anyone here that is familiar with the OMD or maintains it? Okay. It's <laughs> already gone. Well, uh, I, I might have. If I weren't so lazy, I really hate packaging stuff because it's a lot of work. Uh, but definitely, it could be done and it should be done. All right. Is there anyone that wants to buy me beer at 6 o'clock? No? Because there was a presentation like half an hour ago and someone brought a bottle of Jagermeister on, on demand. So it was worth a shot trying. There was one more question. Yes? No, I was just going to say the beer will be free, so you don't have to pay. Fr free. <laughs> oh. I think gift culture. Yes, <laughs> it is a gift culture. Does anyone like the idea of gift culture? Yes, I, I do quite like it, and I, I really want to believe in that it works. And uh, otherwise, I've been sweating my ass off for four years making something and getting nothing out of it. I, I really want to get something out of it. Who doesn't? <laughs> All right. Question. Come on. No? All right. So uh, thank you very much again. I see you tonight.